Hi, I'm Daz from Computer Water Cooling Store, dasmo.com, and this is part 3 of complete water cooling tutorial. Today I would like to talk to you about terminology. Most people already know what this main computer components called, like hard drive and motherboard, so it's not surprise you anymore. But still, lots of people get confused about different parts regarding water cooling and what is block is and what is radiator and uh, why you need reservoir and things like this. So I would like to spell out some of the mystery out of the subject and we'll look into main components and discuss what the, the main component of any water cooling system is your water block. And let's discuss that. But before, let's look into the history. In old days, all you needed to cool your, let's say, center processor unit or processor was little heat sink like this and it took care about all your overheating needs in this little form factor and even if you had a high-end system with a turbo into it you might have a little fan attached to that heat sink and that again was totally enough to make sure that nothing bad happening with your computer in terms of temperature and when we start getting more powerful processor and so on and so forth all that happened, we just start getting bigger heat sinks, like on this Pentium chip. And again, for the turbo users, you might have the same thingy with a fan attached to that. And fast forwarding to the present day, we still have a heat sink with a fan attached to it. Not much changes, just the size, the bit material, and speed of the fan. And for those, who is using really high-end system and want to overclock and run their computer really fast, they have to use something better than that and which just comes to the monster heat sinks with the multiple fans to it, attached to it. And this is a medium-sized version, there's a sound which is double of that. And even if this doesn't cut you, your last line of defense something like this. Let me show you in a second. This is the best you can use in terms of fans. I can't hold it anymore, but you get an idea. And if this solution doesn't really appealing to you, your only chance is to go to something like this. And what is that? It's that the water block that I promised you to talk about. Essentially what it does is attach on one end to your hot component like processor and another end you have inlet and outlet for the water that goes through the hollow chamber inside and that takes your heat away. Simple as that. And the components can be any kind of components. We discuss a center processor unit, but it also can be, let's say, another victim of overheating your graphical card. And you know that in good old days, all you needed was this little heat sink on your main chip and it was okay and if you have a enthusiast version you have a fan attached to that thingy and today you have a monster heat sink to make sure it cools enough and if it doesn't help you the last line defense You know what I'm talking about. So, you have to use a block that will do the same job for you. And uh, how blocks works? Again, one side goes to your component and very often it has a perfect shape of the circuit board of your component like this block for video card. It has exactly the same shape as your circuit board. 
And on other hand, you have a inlet for the water and outlet for the water and water just going through the chamber inside across across the old block and getting out and take heat away. Simple as that. The only problem is how to deliver water to your block and how to take it out. So naturally you need some sort of device which will push water through the system and obviously it's called water pump. Basically most of those things coming from the heritage of um, fish tanks or garden fountains. But modified versions found their way to computer systems. And basically this is number two component that you need to get rid of the heat in your system. And okay, so we have something that moving water, we have something that taking heat away from the chip and uh, how we get rid of the heat. Getting rid of the heat we need a component called the radiator and this works the same way as a heat sink on a let's say CPU it just located somewhere away from the this electronic components and uh, it looks like this. What radiator is essentially it's an active heat sink unlike passive heat sinks when you have just piece of metal this piece of metal has holes in it so the water going through it and it heats the entire metal that this radiator is made of and what you do you attach the same traditional fan to the radiator and you take heat away by blowing air through it where is the advantage coming from from the traditional heat sink first of all you can have this radiator completely outside of the case or attached to the let's say back panel of the case so the hot air doesn't get mixed with any other hot air inside of the case and get carried away right immediately. Also the efficiency of this thing for the single fan configuration is equal of any high-end heat sink you can imagine but unlike the traditional heat sinks radiator can come with the different sizes and it can be a radiator for two fans and can be for three fans for four fans even for five fans and and it will be equal of multiple monster heat sinks but physically you can't attach monster heat sink to the uh, your CPU in this case because the radiator is an external device it can grow as much as you want you can have a multiple bigger radiator so the cooling potential is much bigger when with traditional um, heat sink attached directly to the component and that's where your advantage coming from and that's why water cooling is the next step for traditional um, fr from traditional way of cooling with, uh, with just fans and passive heat sinks so moving further we covered three components the block that take heat away the pump that push water and the radiator that take care about taking heat to the air and get it it's away from the system so the only last component that left and it's mandatory is the tubing because how you connect everything together so you need tube to connect all three components we discussed in one single loop. You can't quite attach to you to each device just you know an easy way. So there is accessory coming to it that called fitting. The only purpose of fitting is to allow you to connect a piece of tube to a block like this and basically it's a piece of metal that allows you to securely attach tubing without spilling any water to the piece of metal that actually gets screwed directly to your water block that's all it does fitting comes in different shapes and forms and factors and we have a totally separate video to discuss it because it's quite a big subject but 
Again, the only reason to have fittings to attach plastic tubing to a metal block. That's all. The really only thing left is the water that you fill your system. But the things we discussed today, that's all you need to make a functional loop. The anything beyond that is accessories that makes your life easier. But they're optional, not mandatory. We will discuss them, but this is a bare minimum. You select pump, you select your blocks, you select your tube and fittings to connect everything together plus radiator size and your system is ready. Not that difficult, isn't it? I come back with more.